And welcome to The Jungle. I'm Eric Holtzclaw, Chief Strategist with Liger Partners. I'm joined this morning with an old friend. So I'm so, so glad to catch up with you. We've, uh, I think the last time we spoke, I was doing the radio show down at Biz 1190. So yes. it's so nice to have in the studio this morning, Smita Daya. Yes. I did it right. Thank you. <laughs> That's right before. Eric. Good morning. Yes. With Ole Oliva. Yes. And uh, if you haven't visited her little store over in East Cobb, she has a olive oil and foods and other kinds of olive items. Olive oil, vinegar tasting room, a teaching kitchen now. And wow, yes. wow, nice. Super excited to yeah. have that. Yeah, yeah so t- tell us a little bit about, I mean, how long has the store been around? So we opened in 2016. Okay. And um, three years when the lease was um, starting to get up, uh, uh, you know, we decided that we needed to have a bigger space and uh, built out a kitchen. So we're in the same mall, but we're just moved across the parking lot. Yeah. Okay. And now we have an Ayurvedic teaching ah, kitchen. Okay. It's a beautiful teaching kitchen. Yes. I love it. Uh, we do meal pickups. Uh, we do a lot of workshops in there. Uh, just you know, really, really fun place to be now. Yeah, what I've always loved about the way you've looked at your business is, you know, many people get into one thing. They're like, oh, we sell olive oil, Mm -hmm. we sell vinegars. And you've always figured out ways of expanding and extending the business off that base. Sure. That's a really smart way to yeah. to both grow the business and, and keep it interesting. Keep it, keep it going and uh, keep it more creative yeah. with a lot of energy. Yeah. yeah. So talk to me. I, I know this, but for the audience that may not have heard it. So have you always been into olive oil or is that something that? <laughs> so, yeah. So I, I have a really fun story. Um, you know, I, I started this business uh, in 2016 um, a few years before that, when I turned 50, I turned around to my husband and I said, I think, Dilip, I'm done with my legal, uh, you know, my legal work. And um, so I decided uh, just to send my resignation in. Uh, and he asked me, he says, well, if you send your resignation in today, what are you going to do? Right. And I said, well, I think God has a plan. I'm going to do exactly what I do in our kitchen and bring it up to the forefront in retail. And so it took me a couple of years to put it together. And, uh, you know, so we started the olive oil and vinegar tasting room. We co-share a farm in Italy as well. So um, olive oil has been a passion in our family all the time, and we cook healthy. And so that was um, the premise that we started with. I'm also of an Asian background, Indian background, so I have always cooked Ayurvedically. Okay. And so decided, you know, what are we going to do with the store as we expand? And so when, once we opened the store, started that going, uh, started planning on how to fuse the Mediterranean diet with the Ayurvedic diet. Mediterranean diet is very celebrative. Um, you know, lots of food, lots of fun, lots of people. Um, You congregate as a family and you eat together, but it's all healthy food also. Mediterranean diet is healthy. It's all plant-based whole foods mainly um, with a little bit of meats there. Um, And Ayurveda brings in the awareness of how to eat, what to eat, and when to eat. And so that whole concept was put together. And um, so, yeah, when you come into my workshops, that's exactly what we do now. Yeah. Um, You know, how to slow down the celebrative culture, but just making sure that the awareness is there on the how, the when, and the what um, to eat. Yeah. Yeah. So give me an example of that. So what would be like a traditional way versus, and I'm not going to say it right, Ayurveda? Uh Uh-huh. Ayurveda way, yes. Yes. So Ayurveda teaches us to be very mindful of our eating. So how do we eat? Um, Are we eating with lots of TV noise in the back or social media? Or are we actually paying attention to what we're eating and understanding the tastes? The six tastes in Ayurveda is very important. The sweet, the sour, salty, bitter, pungent, and astringent. And each of those tastes have a specific purpose in our body for our body tissues and how to build our tissues. Um, and so if we're not mindful and we're just chomping it down, the food, um, we're really not digesting it. Yeah. And so we digest with our emotions as well. So are we just digesting what we're seeing in the noise in the TV or the social media on the phone or the, you know, there's too much going around. Um, so that's on the how. 
Um, the what we eat is making sure that the six tastes are incorporated. Um, and one of my fun classes I teach is on augmenting and extracting, where we teach you how to plate. Augmenting foods are basically any sweet foods, um, salty, sour, um, and sweet tastes, and then the extractive foods are the bitter, pungent, and astringent. And how do you plate your um, you know, food that way you are satisfied with all of your six tastes so that you don't have the cravings? Right. Okay. Very and, nice. And when to eat is obviously with the light and night uh, carcadium, you know, the, the day and night, um, it goes according to the planetary. So um, if we're eating the heaviest meal um, at six o'clock at night, when the night is coming in and our body is slowing down, um, are we going to digest? Right. Um, no, not really. We will we'll digest a little bit, but then majority of it will stay as undigested byproducts. And so, you know, eating at noon when the sun is at its highest, our digestive fire is strongest. And so switching over some of your heavier meals, heavier meats at lunch, and then eating a lighter one at dinner, um, you know, those kind of things. Now, I forgot to share before we got into this. My, this is one of my, my favorite topics. I love food. My wife talks about the fact that I'm always thinking about the next meal at the current meal. Yeah. She's like, I'm already planning for the next thing. So, yeah. and just even the return, you know, when my daughter was in school, she would talk about a lot of her friends. We still s sat down every night to a family dinner. So mm -hmm. we always had family dinner. There was no TV. We would, and so many people do kind of sit in front of the television and eat and, yeah. You know, kind of just the return to using food as a way to, to relate and, you know, yeah. have conversations and enjoy it. So, enjoy it yeah. and uh, being mindful in how we prepare, you yeah, know. And yeah. was there love gone into the preparation of the food? Because those vibrations finally get transmitted to whoever you're feeding. Yeah, yeah, so exactly. it's very important. Yeah. And so started the business again in 2016. 16. Mm -hmm. So been running it along. And then just because you're one of the few that I've had and that's a true small business. Yes. So then everything starts to shut down in March. Yes. And are you in the middle of building the kitchen at that time too? I just opened oh, my new wow. kitchen. Wow. And um, I had classes planned. I had workshops planned. And all of a sudden, it shut down March. Um, and then it was a quick uh, thinking and saying, oh, my goodness, what are we going to do? Yeah. And rather than sitting and saying, okay, we're shut down. We'll just wait for somebody to give us a guideline and say we can open now. I stayed open, actually, the whole way. Um, the store stayed open. Um, we did a lot of online, curbside, those kind of things in the beginning. Um, because of, you know, people couldn't come into the store. Right. So we did that. Um, we are essential foods, um, you know, olive oil and food, and, and, and so you, ha you could stay open. So we decided then, okay, what are we going to do to start bringing the customers back, um, even if it's curbside, and I would go, you know, they'd pop their car and I'd drop the products off. Um, not just that, but then I started, decided, you know, okay, what can I do to give back to the community? At that point, a lot of it was on the frontline workers. The, the emphasis was on the frontline workers that were treating COVID. Um, I decided that I was not going to just sit around. I said, I'm going to give back to the community by cooking yeah. and cooking immune boosting meals. So I started donating the foods. Um, because we did have food in the store and I didn't want everything to go to waste. Right. And, and so I just started looking for places that were looking um, for donated foods. And, and so we started with Wellstar and then we started with um, uh, Piedmont Cancer and then uh, went on to an orphanage in Marietta, CCYA, where they have 42 orphans. And oftentimes in COVID, we've forgotten those orphans. Yeah. And yeah. they need the food. Yeah. So. Um, just cooking and giving back. It was just enough to keep me busy right. and keep going. Um, so to date, uh, we have done over a thousand meals. Oh, wow. Donated, single-handedly cooked, yep. and all immune-boosting, Ayurvedically cooked, um, single-handedly and, and, and donated. Yeah. Wow. So I just kept busy with that. And, you know, it's, it's, entrepreneurship is not just about um, making the money. Right. It's about giving back. Yeah. And it's 
it's giving back to the community. How do you build a community to be a stronger community? Also letting them know, hey, I'm still here. Right. But I'm going to be here part of the community, and this is what we can do together. Yeah. Um, and so that was going on, and, and that helped a lot to keep my mind active, mm -hmm. to be more creative in the kitchen, um, to be more creative in trying to figure out what pairings go on the olive oil side, vinegar side. Um, and so it was a lot of fun and learning Yeah. Uh, rather than just sitting and, and not doing anything. Well, d two things in entrepreneurship yeah. you talked about, you know, it's not about the money. So any of you that think you're going to start a business for the money, you are wrong, 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 wrong. Yeah. <laughs> so the money will be there. <laughs> money will be there, but that is not, can't be your driver, right? Yeah. Like it's got to be about. You've got to have the passion. Yeah. And creative process. And creative process. And, yeah. So yeah. entrepreneurs hate to sit around if like something, I mean, that was yeah. the worst when. I started to realize that we were going to get stuck at the house. And that time I'm like, oh my gosh, like my family was like, oh my gosh, <laughs> what yeah. are we going to do with this yeah. guy? Because I can't be there more than 24 hours typically without kind of right. going a little crazy. And our purpose, which sounds like was similar to yours, is as that started to happen, we just wanted to make sure we were still standing on the other side. Right. So we wanted people to know throughout it, we're still here. And at the end to right. be like, and we're still here, right? We're still here. Because if you go quiet, specifically during periods of time like that, people aren't, sh we're not certain. Not sure whether you're open, whether you're still in business, um, but you have to keep your mind active. Yeah. You have to keep your mind creative. Um, and if it's your passion, true passion, it's going to be there. Right. It's just you have to tap into it, right? Yeah. And and how do you do that to make sure that you are going, going to survive and come out stronger and resilient at right. the back end? Yeah. Um, so for me, no was not an option. <laughs> I was not going to sit back and just wait for things to happen because things are not going to happen. Yes. Um, so you really have to be creative um, and you have to be positive Throughout this whole COVID, I mean, there were so many times that people would be depressed and, um, you know, just be very down and saying, oh, my gosh, this, you know, how are we going to do it? There are ways to do it. Yeah. And you just have to stay positive and figure it out. Mm -hmm. And if you really, you know, I do a lot of yoga and meditation. So one of my training for Ayurveda was... I did um, a little bit of monk training mm -hmm. in um, yeah, you went to silence. Hawaii, right? I did, okay. I did. Yeah. Um, I did my training with Myra Levine, um, my mentor, my guru, um, uh, with Hale Pule and in Hawaii. And then I went to Thailand and India, and I finished my certification in India. Wow. Um, but I did monk living. It was done in silence. And um, so when you start to do meditation and start to focus inwards, um, you know, and you can tap into certain feelings and, and things that you need to tap into to get stronger and, and be sure that you are going to survive. And right. that, that helped me through this whole process. Yeah, 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 absolutely. So so let's take a step back to <clears throat> just, you know, talking about key ingredients, because you started off with olive oil and, and mm -hmm. vinegar. So tell me why, why can't I just go into the store and buy olive oil? You, uh, you mean like a regular yeah, store? Regular yeah, regular store. Yeah, absolutely. Um, if you go into a regular store, you know, I don't know how long the olive oils have been sitting there on the shelf. Um, some of the olive oils might be extra virgin olive oil. Um, some of them might be uh, mixed in with other oils. And so you have to be really, really careful. Um, we have fresh olive oil. Um, so every harvest, um, depending on the northern hemisphere, southern hemisphere, we will get a fresh batch of the harvested olive oil. Um, it is fresh. We have a lot batch number um, for each one. We rotate our products every 45 days. Oh, wow. And so it's fresh. And we freshly pack it in the store. We bottle it in the store. So it doesn't stay on the shelf for a year. Um, and then, you know, you open the bottle. And you might like it. You might not like it because... Um, olive oil is not aged like balsamics. So olive oil has to be used up once you open the bottle. Um, otherwise, it will go rancid. Mm -hmm. um, we also co-share a farm in Italy, so we harvest and mill our own house blend as well. So we are hands-on um, from harvesting to milling to bottling it in the store. 
Um, so it's it's a passion. Yeah. 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 And Dilip is in uh, my husband is in olive oil sommelier as well. So yeah. Yeah. It's very um, much yeah. like a wine or bourbon. It is, or and kind he's of thing. a wine sommelier too. He <laughs> went and got he went and he, you know just fun. Yeah. Um, so he decided to do that as well. But uh, you know the sensory analysis. It, it's uh, olive oil is so intricate, right? So the sensory sensory analysis has to be done. Yeah. Um, and we do our own. So. You know, Dillip does that, and we send it out to Louisiana to get tested as well. So, you know, the process has to be done correctly. Um, but the fresh, you know, harvest, you can't beat fresh olive oil from stuff that's been since, you know, I know sitting on the shelf for a year now, you know, two yeah. years. And what's amazing, too, is going through the store, yeah. have, you have lots of different flavored so mm -hmm. they have lots of different flavors to them. Yeah. You can kind of do some interesting things with it Correct. as you're sort of figuring out how to put together a, uh, yeah. a meal. One of my favorite, you have the herbs that you put in the uh, olive oil with bread, yes, which is just a very nice spicy. alternative to butter. Absolutely. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so as you've gotten into the, the new thing, it sounds like, is the kitchen. So as the have you been able to reopen and do lessons I and things? I have started opening back. Um, so during COVID also did some virtual classes. Okay, yeah. um, Virtual was uh, really nice to give back to the community at the same time. Uh, and then we have started back in-house classes, limiting it to just maybe seven uh, people at a time. Got it. Um, instead of the 20 something that we used to have. Right. Um, so yeah, we are starting back um, with the classes and it's been fun. Yeah. It's been fun and it's more like a one-on-one -on -one with each individual that walks in. Um, I do consultations, Ayurvedic consultations as well. Those are going on. Those are on an individual basis. So that I can do. Um, with those, I also teach you how to cook yeah. uh, based on your body type. Mm. So Ayurveda is about, you know, um, three different body types and three different, uh, you know, the constitutions. Um, it's the vata, pitta, and kapha. And depends on what your body type is, uh, we go through the consultation and then teach you how to cook for your body type. Okay. So, for example, vata is air and space. So if your body type is made up of air and space... Um, then you need to reduce some of those airy and spacey foods so that you're not aggravated or imbalanced. Um, pitta is fire and water. And so if you eat too much of the spicy foods, um, you are going to have some heartburn, um, you know, acid reflux, those kind of things. And okay. kapha is earth and water. So uh, earth and water are heavy. If you eat heavier foods, you're prone to pick up more weight. Uh, um, you know, prone to get more diabetes and those kind of things. So body so, type, meaning though, the body type that you are prone to or how your body is now? What do you mean by that? How your body is now. As now, okay, mm -hmm. okay. So yeah. if you want to so move it. Mm -hmm. yeah, so okay. yeah, just, you know, a lot of people say I have gluten issues or right. I have Crohn's or I have, a, you know, diabetes that's borderline or cholesterol that's borderline. I'm getting a lot of eczema or I'm getting a lot of psoriasis issues and those kind of things. Those can be pretty much treated with food. Food, yeah. Um, rather than it's a popping crazy that people yeah. don't realize you, the thing you put in your body all day right. long. So even the food that we eat has to be unadulterated. Right. It can't be chemically, um, you know, uh, altered. So it has to be natural as possible. Yeah. So whole foods, natural foods. Um, when you add too many chemicals in your in in your food, and it's processed. It, it changes your whole body. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. You know? So when you have people going through the lessons, I've done a bunch of cooking classes and things, and there's mm -hmm. always, you know, that that aha moment or something that you learn as you go through the process. Sure. What's one, th one, one or two things you see people sort of go, oh, I didn't know that, or I didn't think about you that? You know, when I uh, – so each of my cooking class has a lecture. Okay. So I love that because um, I love really? to educate. Yes. <laughs> so each of the class has a PowerPoint. Uh, so we'll go through maybe 20 minutes of that um, uh, just so that you can understand the concept of um, not just Ayurveda, but also the food concept. Right. Uh, and then we get into the kitchen. And that aha moment is, oh, my gosh. Now I can put these things together. Mm -hmm. So when we talk about the six tastes or we talk about the five elements and um, how the five elements, which are the space, the air, the fire, earth, and water, how those are related in terms of food and in wh what it means to you as far as your body. Right. And people will always, I normally start off with a water class 
and the water classes are where people will be like, oh my gosh, I think I've been drinking my water incorrectly. So, yeah. Uh, so yeah, how are people do, drinking yeah. water incorrectly? Yeah, uh, you know, water um, has to, you know, we, you know, I work out and uh, you work out and we all go out to the gym and we, we get done and we're sweaty and uh, we take this, uh, you know, 32 ounce bottle and we're gulping the water down. And when we're gulping the water down, um, you know, all we're doing is we're just adding too much water in our body that stays there, which then starts causing acidity. A lot mm. of people say, you know, I have acid reflux and, and we have gas. You know, when I burp, it comes out as sour. Yeah. And uh, why? Because we're drinking too much water. Um, sipping your water at room temperature rather than having iced water. Um, cooking your water uh, makes a difference. Um, and then drinking your water Ayurvedically, depending on your constitution. Um, so vata people uh, can drink at least six to eight glasses. You know, kapha people tend to have more, but they need to reduce them. And, and so, you know, y we have different ways of cooking our water. And, um, you know, how do you purify that water? Oh, wow. And so, yeah, yeah, it's, uh, it's funny. So the aha moment does happen, and it happens quite often. In the beginning, when I start my workshops and I, I do the lecture, everybody's quiet, and I'll always stop in between and say, does anybody have any questions? Um, do you have any questions? And everybody's like, um, we're absorbing this. <laughs> uh, we're <laughs> They're absorbing I'm trying, yeah, yeah. I, I've got to write my notes first. And, yeah. and, and then the questions do come. Yeah. And the questions are really intelligent questions. Um, people are asking and inquisitive about what's going on. And, oh, my gosh, how does that work? And then especially when we go in the, into the kitchen and just making them understand the augmenting and extracting or making sure, you know, gluten issues. For example, if you like oatmeal and you can't eat the oatmeal because you have gluten, how do you cook it with the ghee and roast it? And, and then you are able to eat that oatmeal yeah. um, so that it doesn't affect you um, as far as your digestive. Isn't it interesting how, how much we don't teach basics, you know, yes. like the basics of finance, the basics of cooking. Are there these things that just society the misses? The simpler, the better. This, yeah. The, as we move through. The yeah. My uh, daughter is a, uh, she just graduated with her degree in ceramics and I go back to cooking for that because when we first started, you know, she always liked to bake and I would, I would give her a hard time because she never baked with a recipe. And mm -hmm. I was like, well, if you're not going to bake with, if you're not going to follow a recipe, then you're not a baker. You are a cook, you know, cooks mm -hmm. kind of randomly throw things in and figure out what the tastes are or whatever. And she was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. She always still bakes today without a recipe, which is why she does ceramics, because she goes in there and she just knows how to kind of put the materials put together. together and make, and yeah. knows how it feels and things yeah. like that versus kind of following it. But yeah. uh, she showed me, because I was like, you're a baker. You have to be very precise. Da, da, yeah. da. And she's like, nah, I'll be fine. And she's Well, Ayurveda is all about intuition. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, we teach you intuition. I think a lot of the Italian dishes are too. Yeah. Um, and, you know, one of the fun classes I did the other day was um, doing tiramisu class. Everybody loves tiramisu. Yeah. Uh, but without the sugar. Oh, wow. And how do you make tiramisu without the sugar? So that's one, you know, that's how you mix Ayurveda with Mediterranean. Mm -hmm. um, just teaching you how to do these wonderful dishes and desserts that everybody craves for, but then trying to mix it with the Ayurvedic uh, where we don't use the processed stuff um, yeah. or sugars as much. Um, we use natural sweeteners. Right. Um, dates are easy fix. And that's exactly what we did. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's, it's fun. Yeah. And so talk to me about the future then. So you've been in the new space since <laughs> right before the yes, shutdown. Yes, right before the <laughs> shutdown. So we are looking forward to um, just continuing doing what we're doing right now and making sure that we get out of this COVID situation uh, unharmed. Um, and, and just stronger than ever, uh, you know, continuing to do my classes and hopefully take my classes virtually. Um, you know, the teaching part interests me more um, and it's, it's a very passionate um, thing about doing the Ayurvedic cooking classes yeah, in the right. store. And so I think focusing on that as well. Um, and then, you know, the lease is there for five years, so obviously there's going to be a lot of creativity and uh, a lot of new things coming up. 
I'm looking forward to the Christmas season. I'm already planning different things for that. Um, so yeah, looking forward to, to you know, just being, you know, there and having fun with what I do and trying to figure out, oh my gosh, what am I doing next? Because once I do something and I like, I'm like, okay, I went that level. I'm like, oh my gosh, I, how do I top that? Yeah. And so you're always trying to challenge yourself to top something that you've already done. Right. Um, and that's that's a challenge that I take on every day. Yeah. Well, very nice. Yeah. yeah. Well, uh, and it's such a, you know, taking the cooking and the entrepreneurship, it is such a creative process. You know, you get to kind of think through how do you invent something new every day. Yeah. So very nice. Well, so glad to catch up with you. It was Likewise. very nice. Thank yes. you so much. So we've been talking today with Smita Daya. Yeah. She is with Olay Oliva, which is an olive oil store over in East Cobb. So you should definitely check them out. We'll put all of their information in our show notes. And specifically, if you're doing the virtual classes, even people who are not in the Atlanta market can, uh, can check it out. Can check it out. Check it out. So thanks so much for joining us on The Jungle. I'm Chief Strategist Eric Holtzgar, and uh, we'll see you next time. Thank you, Eric.